Be it a Titan unleashed by the gods, or a low to mid-tier affordable rum that's good enough to get you drunk. There is no denying it. The Kraken is badass. Yes, 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 I know it's far off, but I really wanted to try and get out another video before the holidays. And then looking around for assets, I happened to come across the ship's geometry. So I figured, why not have a little fun, so bear with me on some of the crude footage. Seriously, just the sound of it. The Kraken. It instills an air of pure awesome. Of the capital behemoths, this sucker is highly prized for its carrier abilities. While not a military class capital ship, this beast is an attack carrier that comes in two flavors, known as the Base Kraken and the Kraken Privateer. Putting aside the flagrantly overpriced ship aspect, especially the Privateer, after it received what I call the Great Castrating, thanks to the far less expensive Banu Merchantman, between both Krakens, it is the interior that only sets these two ships apart. Yes, weapons and ship components are identical. Both are capable of rearming ships, refueling ships, and repairing ships, as well as both being able to spawn ships on their landing pads. And for you masochists out there, both have the ability to land planet side. So if you have ever flown the Reclaimer, I would imagine that that's going to feel like flying an arrow by the time you fly the Kraken out of Atmo. And for those of you with the balls large enough to actually land this sucker, tell that Hercules A2 that Gypsy says hi. So let's cut straight into it. What are the internal differences? The base version has a larger cargo capacity, sitting at 3,792 while the Privateer has a shared cargo grid with the internal shops as well as food stores. And according to the concept art, so take that with a grain of salt, a bar, and then trades in some of that extra space for Habs, then has its own dedicated cargo bay for itself of 768. And presently, each shop will hold 189 SEU. I thoroughly expect this to be updated for both ships over time. A quick tip for you new citizens. Rule number one in Star Citizen. Never, ever trust the ship's stats page for unreleased ships. It is never final. It's just ballpark. They can say they know the ship metrics all they want, but things change. Additionally, the base version also features a dragonfly bay in the rear, whereas on the privateer, that is replaced by a shielded black market shop that's accessible by invite only. What that means, I have no idea. Invites by party members, the Kraken owner, I mean, what? While the new CEO of Drake Interplanetary in the lore wishes to shed that pirate affiliation image, things like this sort of make it hard for them to distance themselves from that. The last difference is the fuel tanks. I am assuming this will be where they redesign the most, as both have the exact same fuel tanks listed, and both can refuel ships. Where I sort of get lost on this is the fact that under each landing pad, I notice that there are two huge external fuel tanks. So for me, I picture the fuel actually being stored there for those ships who have landed and need refueling. It's one where I think they just remove the internal models and keep them external, then give them even more cargo room to the base Kraken. But that's my own theory on it. Beyond that, the ships are identical. It narrows down to what aspect you wish to prioritize. If you want more cargo space, and I guess faster attack ability with the dragonflies compared to the privateer, then yeah, you'll probably want to go with the base model. Or do you want to basically have a, what I refer to as a pocket port Alisar R&R station for your org? While I feel many think the attack capabilities will be the core aspect most go for, my gut tells me that the mobile space station for an org will become more desired in the end for restocking beyond just a ship, as part of Star Citizen is actually living in the verse. The one aspect I will really be interested in seeing will be the open market. Some are electing to keep their privateers accessible only to their org, and some are going to be placing beacons for NPCs and players alike. In the world of gaming, to me, this is just not a realistic idea. In any MMO, you would never place a beacon to tell others where you are located. Hell, we already see it happening with medical. Basically, if they are not your friends or in your org, you just don't do it. I do expect both ships to get larger. All ships get larger. I think recently the head of the ship design team even just mentioned that. CIG, at this point, knows the larger ships benefit from having an interior built out first, as they always need to adjust the exterior later. By building the interior, they can more rapidly build the exterior, and often results in a larger ship. But again, the enlarging of bullships are my own personal theory. 
If I had to guess a number on it, I would say probably somewhere between 320 to possibly even 350 meters. Unless they go ahead and just simply make it wider and taller. But what is not a theory is that the Kraken will be able to have its hull altered. Yes, one of the neat aspects of this ship is that you can switch between both the Kraken Privateer and the base Kraken. Just not instantly as you do say a ship component. And there is a common misconception of how these variants work when applying an upgrade purchased on the store from a base Kraken to a privateer. In short, how it works is if you do go the route of getting a base Kraken, first off, congrats. Then, if you wish, get the upgrade conversion kit. Remember, all of this stuff can be acquired later in the game. If you get the conversion kit and apply it on the RSI website in your hangar, then, in your hangar, you will lose the base Kraken. Basically, the text just changes and says you now have a Kraken Privateer. Many take this as the fact that they no longer ever have access to a base Kraken. This is incorrect. What happens is that the Kraken Privateer simply becomes the starting variant that you get. And basically, since it is the full package, it's indicating in the game that you essentially have access to both. So, at a later date, if you decide you want to go back to a base Kraken, and then after that, go back to the Privateer, depending on what the org needs, you can. What you will do will be to take your Kraken to a capital shipyard, and pay a very large fee, and wait a set amount of time for the conversion to be complete. This could be 24 hours, could be a week, who knows. Regardless, once you own the kit, you can then move back and forth later on. Just know it is not instant. Think of it as two Krakens in one. Stuff like this will also be similar on other ship conversions. The Privateer is just one of the largest conversions, as it is not modular. According to SIG, this actually is an entire hull alteration, lore-wise. To me, I say it's just modular. They just want to put in boundaries, I suspect, which is fine. In a quote, why the hell wasn't this an idea from the inception, surprise, both are now confirmed to get medbays, though I know they want to keep that Drake cheap aspect in lore and desire to keep it at a tier 3, but really, it's a massive capital ship. To not have a respawn capable medbay would be pretty lame. For an in-game capital ship, this should just basically be standard without a question ever being posed. <laughs> not saying to make it a tier 1 to remove hospitals or anything like that, such as the Endeavor or the Apollo, but still, needed. In the end, CIG already mentioned that of the two, the Privateer will be far more bespoke. So what I take that as translating into is that the Privateer will be coming out much later. So the base is more likely the loner. And I'm pretty sure that the Idris is going to drop first. I see the Idris becoming the loner for both of the Krakens. And so the base Kraken comes online. Both the Privateer and the base model bleed capital components, but what they have too much of is that notorious Drake armor. But don't worry, it's not going to be like paper mache. It's still capital grade armor. It's just not the big military grade armor that people are accustomed to. To offset that, Drake decided to go with using two big capital shield generators. So if you're attacking one, you're probably going to want to focus on bringing ballistics more than energy weapons maybe some massive distortion cannons. But an important note is that the shields of these beasts do not cover the ships that are on the pad. The only ships that will be protected with the Kraken will be the ones that are internally stored. As far as combat is concerned, both variants should not be actively out seeking a fight, but rather, if an attack is desired, use it from a distance and launch your force from the ship and ideally have the Kraken further protected by escort ships such as, say, a Hammerhead or a Perseus. But my god, can you imagine what it's going to be like launching, say, four Ares and two Eclipse stealth bombers from a Kraken? I admit to having a Kraken Privateer. The ability to swap later in game was highly desirable. But also, I felt of the two, the ability to support Goon Squadron and other players was simply more my style. I also knew I was going to get the upgrade anyways, so why not have the Privateer to start and use the guaranteed base Kraken loaners when they come out and see how I like that ship. Things I would like to see for the Kraken is that they need to figure out this interior when they upgraded the Banu Merchantman's metrics and what is being crammed in there for a ship that technically is not supposed to be a capital and also supposed to be seen as a stepping stone to get to a Kraken. The Kraken begins to seem underwhelming, and the ship is not even out yet, nor the Banning Merchantman. And asking $2,000 for an inferior ship compared to a $550 ship? Yeah, 
even compared to a $1,400 base Kraken, that's nuts. I would also like to see them figure out more of the defensive capabilities. Again, they opened up a whole can of worms with the banning Merchantman. Perhaps boosting that main turret to a size 9 and add a few more size 5s for defensive measures. It could be too much, but as it stands, at least for the privateer, it is not doing much more for what CIG is asking, and this was highlighted by the fact in this past year's IAE. For the first time ever, not even the base Kraken sold out. But I don't blame any players. The Banu Merchantman is the far superior choice here, especially in dollar value. And again, I have one of those in my buyback for half of what it is being sold for today. I would also like clarification on ships that can be spawned and land to be refueled. On the Star Citizen Leaks channel, they easily fit a caterpillar on top of the deck of a Kraken with lots of room to spare. And CIG says that if it sits, it fits. So will this mean that the two medium pads will be able to have a large ship such as the caterpillar land and be able to still refuel? Or do they actually need to be medium ships in order for that function to work? And can one large ship simply be spawned on two medium pads? So many unanswered questions that are still years away. So what about you? How would you use the Kraken? Does your orc have one? And if so, what are the theorized uses for it? Do you all plan to park it out in space as a base of operations? What's your biggest concern with the Kraken ships? Are you going to be ballsy enough if you have a privateer to launch a beacon for your market? Or is there another capital ship that you may have your eye on, and possibly you have zero desire to own a capital ship, and what's your reason for that? So many questions, so many questions. Well, before I go, I wanted to remind everyone that the ongoing contest ends December 25th. For those unaware, I am giving away an Origin 100i game package, as well as a set of 100i ship skins. This is the first contest and entering helps me see how the system works, and will help me see how to do more of these in the future. It's easy. Just visit goonsquadron.com slash giveaways and sign up. You do not need to be subscribed, nothing like that. Anyone can enter. So if you have a friend who wants to try the game but does not feel like spending the money, mention it to them so they can go ahead and sign up. Just make sure that if they do sign up, that they use a referral code. Does not need to be mine, but any referral code so they can start with 5,000 UEC. Well, this will be my last video for a few weeks as I am going to be away for the holidays. Wow, did that sneak up fast. I hope you all have a great holiday and a safe holiday. You all take care and I shall be checking on the comments. If you wish, feel free to join us on the Goon Squadron Discord. We chat there and when able, we game there. No pressure. So come say hi. If you enjoyed the content and would like to see more, please be sure to like and subscribe as that helps support and grow the channel. And I would greatly appreciate it. So until next time, stay badass. Happy holidays. This is Gypsy Ronin, out. Oh,